So in today's video, we're actually going to talk about James Baldwin. I'm going to show you all of my collection when it comes to just his fictional work. Now, James Baldwin is known for his um, nonfiction, but he has a lot of fiction books that are just fantastic. And you guys know fiction is my favorite genre. So I want to share with you guys, um, you know, obviously, like I said, it's fiction um collection some plays some short stories all of that so let's just get started so for the first book which it would actually be um like a semi-autobiographical book uh but i still want to include it and it is go tell it on the mountain now this book was published in 1956 it's his first book um it basically is um about him it starts out with a 14 year old boy uh basically trying to discover um like himself when it comes to sexuality when it comes to religion when it comes to his family all of that um so this one actually is really good and it um it always shocks me how Baldwin can write so such profound work and it's so like complex but he writes it in like little pages this book is only 200 and like 20 pages and he tells a full like story a well-rounded story so that's just like a beauty of a good writer i mean james Baldwin, come on now you can write anything so yeah this is his first uh book next now this is fiction now um his next book is giovanni's room now this was published in 1956 this basically um talks about a american man um that lives in paris and he starts a relationship with a, an italian man named giovanni now the special thing about this novel is all the characters are white and this book was published like i said in 1956 so to have all characters that are white and you're a black gay man that was really really bold ahead of his time and he got kind of a lot of flack from um black audiences but you know james ball when he was gonna write what he was gonna write so <laughs> he was like anyway i'm writing this but when i read that and researched i'm like oh that is just the fact that he did that that's amazing uh so yeah giovanni's room next is another country this is probably my favorite um another country is published in 1962 it's set in the late 1950s um it's about a jazz musician named uh rufus scott he's gone through a lot of stuff has gone through a lot of stuff is going through a lot of stuff and you basically see how he's trying to navigate his life you also see um his friends uh vivaldi is my favorite um and then i love um ida ida's probably my favorite character ida is his sister uh there's a particular scene when vivaldi and ida they're kind of like a couple and vivaldi hasn't told his parents that he has a black girlfriend and you know she knows he has it and she knows it's going to be difficult so like he asks oh by the way would you he's doing it just to be courteous like by the way would you like to go to like to dinner with my parents she's like oh no and he's like pressing like you know why aren't you and she's like i don't feel like educating anyone <laughs> the way she put that was just so funny and you already know what she was talking about he just like kind of let it go um but um this one probably is my favorite so next is Going to Meet the Man. Now this is a collection of short stories. This was published in 1965. It has eight um, short stories in this collection. Now probably my favorite is, um, let's see, cause I wrote it down. My favorite is Coming, uh, Come Out the Wilderness. Now that story, the main protagonist is a woman named Ruth. And if you read a lot of James Baldwin's works, usually the main protagonist is a man so the fact that he wrote it you know in a woman's voice is just amazing so Ruth has this um white boyfriend named Paul and she's basically just going through her life um and she's kind of like kind of bored with her life and kind of sad and you know you just you see everything that's going on you know basically with her life but i i really did like that story also this collection has um his famous short story sunny's blues um which is fantastic uh, i would encourage everyone to read sunny's blues okay the next is tell me how long the train's been gone now this was published in 1968 this is probably my least favorite so this tells a story about leo uh prodhammer now he is an actor and he basically uh has a heart attack when he's on stage 
And so while he's in the hospital, he really is just going through his life. So the ups and downs of his life. And he goes through, you know, his struggle trying to be an actor. He talks about racism. He talks about his childhood. He also has a relationship and affair with a white woman. And he also has a relationship with a black man. So you just see him go through his life while he's in the hospital and, you know, yeah, so that's basically it. The reason why I didn't like this one that much is because he, in all of Baldwin's works, he talks about the church because um, he grew up in the church. But for this one, he blasphemed. And I just was not down with that. Um, the writing is fantastic. But I always say with, you know, with people that grew up in the church or people that have some kind of uh fought with the church not everyone that is in the church is of the church you know you're there to fellowship you're there to you know have a relationship a personal relationship with you and you know god if you do believe you know um so with him he kind of generalizes he blames everything on the people and it's like baldwin you know you gotta it's not the people okay uh sometimes it is but in this case it's like you can't just blame everything on the people not everyone that's in the church is of the church so that was like my main hiccup um but overall the writing is still good it is a well-rounded story clearly uh it just wasn't my favorite uh now next is if bill street could talk now this came out in 1974 this is basically about Fonnie and Trish. They are a young couple. Um, they become engaged. Fonny, uh, uh, Tish um, finds out that she's pregnant. But Fonnie is accused of raping a woman. And then it just goes downhill from there. This was Baldwin's first um, novel exclusively on a Black love story. Also, and it's his first novel that um, the narrator is a woman, uh, like throughout the whole book um so i really did i love this book the story is so sad now you guys know that the movie came out in 2018 um it was uh directed by barry jenkins and of course regina king won uh the academy award uh for playing uh, uh tish's mother i personally like the the way the movie ended um because the movie is different from the book like the ending part um the movie you get closure the book you kind of don't. Uh, but still, I, I love the story. I love the dialogue. It is a realistic story. It's unfortunately when it comes to, you know, men, black men, and when it comes to incarceration and everything is told against them. So you, it's, it's, you see that, you know, in this book. Um, but overall, fantastic book. Next is a children's book. And it is called Little Man, Little Man. Now, this book was published in 1976, but it was out of print. It came um, back into print in 2018. The reason why is when it was published in 1976, the um, critics didn't know whether it was a children's book or an adult book because it's supposed to be geared for children, but it can be also read as a adult book. It's basically about a boy named TJ that he lives in Harlem and the neighborhood basically just like takes care of him. Um, but if you read it, it's like, is this a children's book? Um, it has some aspects, but mainly I read it and I felt like it was an adult book. Um, but overall, loved it. Like I said, it actually was out of print and it came back in print in 2018. This one um, edition will, will be the well, no, it won't be the first edition. This edition actually has um, a forward by his niece and also has a beautiful uh, blurb by uh, LeVar Burton. Love it. And I love the illustrations of this book. It's just so pretty. Love it. And then next is Just Above My Head. This was his last um, fiction book that was published in 1979. So this just talks about um, basically like the behind the scenes of um, like preachers uh, in like the church. The main two um, characters are um, Hall and Author. And this talks about sexuality. It talks about incest. It talks about civil rights. Um, what else? Oh, and then also this book. <laughs> It has 29 characters, so it is very difficult to try to navigate it. How I write this book is, every time I saw a character, I had to write it down and like write the synopsis because that's the only way I could get through it. And then also too, this is the first edition. I have the first edition of this book, so that just makes me even more happier. <laughs> 
Now, next, our um, plays. Now, the first play is The Amen Corner. Now, this actually was published in 1954. So, the main protagonist is a woman named um, Margaret Alexander. Margaret Alexander is actually a preacher. And she has this estranged husband uh, that is, he's kind of like a, a worldly man. He's a musician. And he comes back in her life. Her congregation is basically worried that she is going to backslide and, you know, just don't do anything right um i love this because you see in a lot of especially black churches you don't see women preachers as mainly you know men and the fact that his main protagonist was a woman preacher i just loved it and i love the dialogue in this if you grew up in a black church you're gonna recognize the dialogue in this um also too in 1965 this actually uh premiered on broadway and it starred uh b richards uh she was in the movie guess who's coming to dinner she's known for that um you also have isabel uh sanford she is known for uh in the jeffersons as wheezy jefferson and then um also janetta uh moore she is known for imitation of life she was sarah jane's uh mother so you got heavy hitters right there. So it actually premiered on Broadway and B. Richards um, was nominated for a Tony for that role. So it was a big deal. I love this. I would urge you guys to really pick this up because it was just phenomenal. <laughs> and then lastly is um, Blues for Mr. Charlie. Now this um, was uh, published in 1964. It's dedicated um, of the memory of Megger Evers who was a civil rights leader. Um, also, it is loosely based on Emmett Till, the murder of Emmett Till. And, you know, the story, it's basically about a white man um, that kills a black man. And the title, uh, Blues for Mr. Charlie, Mr. Charlie is a phrase used by blacks um, that refers to a white man. I did not know that. So I'm like, oh, okay. This one is hard because clearly if you know, I mean, the story is about a white man that kills a black man. And then if you know the backstory of uh, Emmett Till, like horrific and then if you know the backstory of mega evers mega evers was actually shot and killed in front of his house um and his children and his wife were there and clearly emmett till 14 year old boy accused of whistling at a white woman and the woman's husband murdered him and the way he murdered him was just unseemly it's it, it just breaks my heart so when i found out that it was based on you know those two you know uh, individuals it just it makes it even more difficult but it still is a very good book so yeah guys that's all I have for you I just wanted to talk about his fictional um books like I said you know he's known for his nonfiction, but he has a lot of fiction books and they are just fantastic if you notice back in 2020 there was a resurgence of Baldwin you know uh back when the black lives matter really heightened even more and I think it's because he was ahead of his time if you do read um What's the book? The Fire uh, Next Time. That actually is a letter to his nephew. And it's talking about how to navigate, you know, in America as a black person. It talks about, um, obviously, race. It talks about gender. It talks about, you know, inequality. It just everything. Religion. A lot of James Baldwin's books, those are going to be the main themes. It's going to be race. It's going to be sexuality. It's going to be um, gender. Uh, what else? Religion. Um and also too, for me, I know if I read, when I read James Baldwin, I just feel such, I just feel like an intellectual. He makes you just be, he his, his writing is so worldly and it just, again, it makes you feel like you're such an intellectual. I feel like I know so much more when I read a James Baldwin book. That's how he makes you feel. He also makes you feel proud to be a black individual, man or female. And when I read him, I am proud to be, you know, a black American because that's another thing too. You know, he always says, if you are black and you're born in America, you're an American. That's not just a white thing. Don't just think that. No, if you are again, born in America and you're black, you are a proud black American. Think like that. And I just love James Baldwin. As you guys can see, I can go on and on. So yeah, guys, that's all I have today. And I'll be back with more black books. Bye.